Hello, welcome back to the channel. And today we will be talking about how can you get your first job as a software engineer. If this is your first time on the channel, my name is Zia. I'm a software engineer at Twitter and I talk about software engineering, tech interviews, and technologies in general on this channel. All right, let's dive in. First thing is, so I will be talking about three things today. First, I will be talking about what are the different ways that you can get in as a software engineer. Two, I will talk about the pros and cons of each different approach there. And three is, what is my general recommendation for what you should do in order to get that first job? If you're short on time, I will give you the recommendation up front, and then you can watch the different approaches and also pros and cons for each later on. TLDR right here is my recommendation if you are a younger or you have some time and you're right out of high school, my recommendation is go to your college, get your degree in computer science. If you have a, if you have an existing job right now and trying to switch careers, then going for a coding bootcamp makes a lot of sense and do that. So that would be my high level recommendation depending on your actual situation. That said, here are the different ways that you can get your first job as a software engineer. First thing is, you can go to college and get your degree in computer science. What are the pros and cons of going with this approach? First thing, let's talk about the cons up front, right? Going to college, that is actually quite a significant financial burden. Right, either to you or to your parents, depending on who's paying for that bill. And in general, in the US right now, college per year ranges from about forty to sixty thousand dollars per year. Now that is just tuition. It doesn't include your living accommodation, your food, textbooks. At least you're looking at forty thousand dollars per year. That's the first thing. Financially, that's a huge strain. And if you have to take out a student loan to do that, depending on what the interest rates on the loans are, how much money you have to take out, you could be potentially looking at a hundred sixty thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars even student loan right when you graduate. So that is not that is not something I would recommend as a way of building up a healthy financial future because if you're taking out $200,000, $300,000 loan, I feel like that's a huge thing when you're not even sure if you want to be in that career for the long term. You can try to get financial aid from the university that you, you're in because I know that, you know, for example, for me in personal, I had scholarships to pay for my tuition. You know, coming from Malaysia, I didn't have a lot of money and it was financially a, a huge burden for my parents and for my family as well. So I worked really hard in school. I got all the A's I needed to get and I applied for um, scholarships, funds, grants, and I worked part-time in school as well to kind of help pay off that tuition without relying on my parents too much. So obviously that's the first con right there. That's the first downside. Uh, the second downside there is if you're not sure what you want to do in the future, going to college might not even be the best decision right there for you because of the reason uh, that I mentioned earlier, which is the financial burden of it. And spending four years in college, or maybe even more if you're going for your master's and your PhD, but at least if you're getting an undergrad in computer science, that's four years right there when you could have spent that time working on something else, maybe going to the industry, being an intern somewhere, and trying to kind of work your way up. Spending four years in college for a future that you're not even sure of, I don't think is a wise investment of time. It's not a good investment of your effort as well because you could be spending that time uh, doing something else, right? Pursuing your actual passion and, and figure things out for yourself. So that's where I don't recommend going to college there. And the third thing there is that being in college, learning computer science, that is very different from actually going into the industry and working. As many people have gone to college and actually gone to work as a software engineer for top tier tech companies, they can attest to the fact that the things that are being taught in school are not directly transferable to the industry right away. Okay, so you might have learned, you know, binary search, sorting, merging of arrays, some, you know, NLP, for example, but not all of that is directly transferable to your work, right? When you're actually working, you might be trying to solve, like, how would you build a certain feature? How do you make it more performant? How do you make sure that bugs don't happen? How do you make sure that you're preventing people from doing things that might break the entire software? So those are some of the things that I don't see being taught in universities. 
universities and colleges. There are other ways of doing that depending on your situation. All right, so those are some of the cons that I see with going to college for if you were looking to be a software engineer. Now let's talk about the pros in this case, right? It's not all that going to college, right? Some people might think it's it's not a good idea, but there are definitely still some pros to being to going to college to get your degree. First, if anything else, going to college is a safe choice. When you go to reputable university for a good computer science program, you actually get to learn more about different aspects of computer science without being too narrow into one specific area right away. What I mean by that is when you go to college, the curriculum itself exposes you to a wide range of different areas in computer science. And as you explore and spend your time mulling over what are the different areas of interest uh, that you have within computer science, it provides a very low pressure environment for you to learn and experiment with different areas. I think that's a great thing. When you're out of high school, 18, 19, 20, 21, um, it gives you experience, exposure that you might not be able to get if you jump into the industry right away. Where in the industry, they're focusing more on depth. But if you don't know if you have that passion, or if you don't know if you're willing to do that for the rest of your life, then I think premature optimization in this case, which is trying to specialize in one area, is not the best idea. So I think going to college in that sense, it exposes you to a wide range of different things so that you can kind of pick and choose and figure out what really works and what doesn't work for you. So that's the first pro of going to college. Now the second thing is, if you're in computer science, looking for a job as a software engineer, there are a lot of, lot of events that are specifically geared towards students in college. You have your student fair or career fair. So that's the first thing. A lot of companies, Google, Facebook, Twitter, for example, they recruit really, really heavily from colleges. So every year they would set up booths, um, set up presentations, on sites, you know, on site interviews to talk to students and get them excited to join their companies. And the reason is because people who generally go to college are driven, smart, and they're pre-vetted. So companies really want to have these people in their pipeline to recruit uh, for their teams. So that's one benefit. The second thing, you know, you have alumni networks that you can leverage in order to get your job. So if you go to a college, like for example, you know, near me, uh, near where I live, is University of Washington. University of Washington is, is probably one of the best schools in the world for computer science and they have a wide range of alumni network that you can leverage if you're looking for a job as a software engineer. Okay, you can call them, you know, talk to them, get some advice, and maybe even get a referral for, for a job if you wanted to. Okay, so that's the second benefit of going to college. You get to build this network of people who are smart, who've been through what you've been through and able to kind of provide you that mentorship guidance as you progress in your career. I think that's invaluable and that's way more important than the brand name, for example, or what school you actually go to. That's the first path that you can take, which is going to college. Second path that you can take is bootcamp. Recently, there has been a rise in the number of coding boot camps to help people transition or get a job as a software engineer. And these types of coding boot camps are generally short, okay? So they range from three months to six months, and they're extremely intense where you're spending eight to nine hours per day just coding. And they teach you generally just the most strict applicable um, skills. Right, so they're not teaching as much of like data structures and algorithms as much. But in general, they are highly intense where you're spending nine to 10 hours per day just coding, trying to build features, trying to understand what are the different frameworks available out there. And they're generally geared towards preparing you for a job as a entry-level software engineer. What are the pros and cons of for going through a coding bootcamp? So let's go through the cons first. So generally, a uh, coding bootcamp is not cheap, but in general, what I've seen there ranges from you know twenty thousand dollars to forty thousand dollars. I think that is generally the price range that I've seen for coding bootcamps, and that can change depending on the location of the coding bootcamp itself, and also that can change depending on the length of the coding bootcamp. Now, there's recently also a really interesting coding bootcamp, Lambda School. 
which I think is really interesting. I, well, I technically, I, I kind of take that back. I wouldn't call it a coding bootcamp, but it is a different kind of education where you don't pay anything upfront and you only pay when you find a job as a software engineer. And they take a cut of you know, your first and second year's uh, salary. But I think that's a good example of what the future of education should be because it sort of takes away financial burden from the student upfront. Because as you're trying to switch careers, having that upfront payment of you know 40 or whatever how much money that you have to pay to in order to either do college or coding bootcamp that doesn't align the outcome with the institution itself. For example, what I mean by that is if you're a coding bootcamp right now and you know, you're taking in $20,000 per student, what is the motivation there, right? Is it to get them a job? Or is that just to find as many students as you can and try to milk as much money out of them as quickly as possible before the whole tech bubble collapses? I kind of really appreciate you know, Lambda School for pushing out and giving opportunities for people who might not have the opportunity there or who might not have the financial capability of paying for their education upfront but would really want to make a change in their life to get better and, and get that job as a software engineer. So, sorry, anyway, I digress. Going back to the cons of a coding bootcamp. So the first thing is the financial cost is actually quite high, but it is somewhat limited in the sense that you're only paying around like for that six months, right? If you don't like it, um, then um, that's it. You're not paying anything more after that. The second thing is it is extremely intense and I don't, I. It, it kind of depends on your personality and how much you're able to take, but because it's generally a really short period of time where it's like, you know, three to six months, it's called a coding bootcamp, right? Not coding hotel. <laughs> yeah, so it's a coding bootcamp. And what that means is that you're, again, you know, you're spending nine, 10 hours, or maybe even 12 hours. I've seen people, some people do that. And you're basically investing committing full time into that period where you're learning nothing but coding. So that could mean you're taking time away from your family, time away from your actual job, where you, you know, making money to pay for your bills, for your kids, whatever that you might have there. And you're just investing all of that effort into coding. So I think that is a huge, huge investment upfront in order to get your way in as a software engineer. Now, it might be pretty effective, but then that's a huge investment there. So I see that as a downside of going to a coding bootcamp. And third, and this is probably the biggest thing that really rocks my boat here, or you know, ruffles my feather, if you might say, that for coding bootcamps, some of them are not accredited or even certified to teach anything related to computer science or software engineering. I've seen examples of that where, you know, some coding bootcamp opens up shop in somewhere, right? Like Utah, for example. Not that I have anything in Utah, but it's just that I've, I've seen situations like that happen where they open up a bootcamp and they take in students midway through the coding bootcamp, the founder, the teachers, they all disappear, leaving the students with nothing to fall back on. Nothing, they don't know what will happen to them. They don't know where their money went. They don't know who to reach out to. And they haven't learned anything in the period of that bootcamp that would prepare them for an entry level job as a software engineer or even like anything remotely related to computer science. Okay? That's the thing that really bothers me because coding bootcamp has been kind of rising up really quickly. There's this intense, immense demand for good computer science courses that people, they're being blindsided, right? They're being tricked into paying for coding boot camps. They're not even teaching them the skills that they need uh, to prepare them for a job in software engineering. That's a risk that you know that's present with going through the path of coding boot camps there are definitely some that are reputable right now they've generated a lot of uh, reputation by means of producing students who actually went on to work for google and twitter and facebook all the top tier companies that you can think of but it's sort of a trial and error process right you have people going in there being sort of like the first guinea pigs through that process Okay, so let's talk about the pros here. You know, it's not all bad about coding bootcamps. What are pros here? First thing is, 
if you haven't had the opportunity to go to college and you're not willing to spend another four years in college just to be a software engineer, then coding bootcamp is a great, great opportunity for you. Okay, it only takes three to six months of effort, right? If you have that amount of time, then coding bootcamp is great. It doesn't promise you anything, but at least I think it's a good pathway to prepare you towards that career switch. Okay, so first thing is the flexibility there to change your, your career midway through. Now, the second thing that I really like for a coding bootcamp that I think makes it stand out is that going through a coding bootcamp, it teaches you all the main basics that you need to know in order to be a productive software engineer. So you might be learning about how to set up a framework, how to set up a website, you know, you might be learning HTML, CSS, um, Python, and how to talk to a database things like that things are really much very practical i would think actually i would think of like a coding bootcamp as a vocational school right where they teach you all the basics that you need to know to perform your duties as a software engineer it doesn't teach you it doesn't give you the exposure to other areas of computer science like nlp you know all the research that goes into building a database for example or how to build a compiler but it does prepare you for a job as a software engineer. That's the six, second upside that I see with going to a coded bootcamp in that it teaches you all the basic skills that you need to be a productive software engineer from day one. So if that's all you care about, right? You don't really, you know that you wanna be a software engineer right away and you don't care about all these other things about compilers, databases, all these other things that might not be relevant to your day-to-day -day job right away as a software engineer, then great, coding bootcamp is for you. And the third thing that I see here with coding bootcamp is that a coding bootcamp is a low risk effort in the sense that after that three to six months, if you decide that whatever that you're learning there or whatever that you've been doing doesn't really align with your interests, then that's it. That's all the investment that you're putting in up front, right? Understand what you really enjoy in your life. I think that's a way better use of time and effort rather than spending four years in college and kind of realizing at the end of that that you don't really want to be a software engineer. Let me kind of put it up front here where software engineering is not for every single one. So you might think that, you know, it's it's this like glorious career or it pays quite a bit, the work-life balance is great, it's really low pressure but that's generally not the case right because being a software engineer it has its own problems as well it has its own challenges as well and I will talk a little bit more about that in a later video but I want you to know that if you're putting in time to learn to polish your skills as a software engineer it's a lifelong pursuit of improvement, of learning to be better. And that is the same case that you can make for any other careers out there. Either of you be a doctor, a lawyer, dentist. You have, If you want to be good at something, you have to spend time and invest your effort into polishing your skills, learning your tools, making sure you're getting better every single day. So if software engineering doesn't interest you, or if it doesn't make you passionate about what you're doing every single day, then maybe that's not the right career for you. And it's perfectly fine. I believe that everyone has a calling in their life and not everyone has to be a, you know, a specific stereotypical career path for you. Okay? You could be the best baker in the world and that's perfectly fine as well. No one says that you have to be a software engineer in order to get money. I believe with you know like YouTube and all this like online social media today, you can still make money if that's all you care about. You can still make a lot of money doing other things. Right? I've seen people you know posting videos on Instagram all day and you know they make really healthy six figures, much more than software engineers. Okay? So there you go. That's my take on what are the different paths that you can take to be a software engineer. If you like that video, leave a comment below, subscribe and hit that like button and I will see you in the next video. Bye.